Will you turn with me in your Bibles to the Gospel of Luke, chapter 1, beginning at verse 39? Luke, chapter 1, beginning at verse 39. Said for the few moments that we have today, we're going to talk about turning your story into a song. Turning your story into a song. My brothers and sisters, um, this message is based on the belief and understanding that each one of us has a story, um, a story of uh, where we have come from, what we have come through, of what God has done and is doing in our lives. Uh, and while our stories uh, are uh, different from each other, none of us have the same story or the same set of experiences uh, that each one of us do share uh, the fact that we have a story, uh, my brothers and sisters. Uh, but there is there's something uh, I want to argue about music, about songs, um, that have a, a particular potential power to them. Um, and if, if you think about it uh, like this, uh, you can be riding down the street, uh, having uh, the best day, the sun is shining, the birds singing, uh, everything seems like it's going great. You turn on the radio and a certain song can play. Um, and I don't know what your song is, but I know you got a song. There's a song that can play that can remind you of somebody or something and can change your whole day. Uh, nobody else has to say something to you, just the song, it gets on the radio and all of a sudden you find your emotions are changing, you are back in an old situation, you're back feeling things that you ain't felt in years before that a song you play can just completely derail uh, your whole vibe for the day. And you go the other way, you can be having a bad day, uh, be down, feeling down, and a certain song come on the radio and all of a sudden it picks you up and gives you the strength and energy to move on. Uh, music has a particular power, my brothers and sisters, um, not only in listening to it, but also in singing it. Um, uh, did you know uh, that it is impossible to stutter when you sing? Uh, that people who have stuttering problems, uh, uh, it is impossible for them to stutter when they sing because the part of your brain that governs your singing is different than the part of your brain that governs your speech. Um, and so you might uh, have a stutter when you talk, but when you sing, you can sing just as fluently um, as if you were Mary Anderson uh, or Whitney Houston, that uh, uh, the part of your brain is the different part of your brain that governs that, which is why uh, when people are suffering from Alzheimer's, even when they forget names and faces and they don't know who people are, they still remember songs. Uh, I, I remember when I was pastoring in Austin, Illinois, I had a church member whose mother was going through Alzheimer's, and so uh, she could not remember him. She didn't remember who he was. He would go there, and uh, she didn't know his name, and uh, treated him like a stranger. It was hard for him, so I went with him there one time, and I didn't know this. I was just there accompanying, and you know, one of the things I do when I'm in a situation, I don't know what else to do with this piano, I just go play the piano. It's how I deal with uncomfortable situations. I just go and start playing the piano. So I just started playing some of the church music. In fact, uh, I played I Surrender All. I remember I played I Surrender All and uh, she just started singing the song. And then he started singing with her and the, the mother and son shared his experience of singing. So then I would go with him regularly uh, to visit his mother and I would just pick the church song and I would play it and they would sing the song together. And I don't know if she ever remembered or was able to say who he was, uh, but they had that experience of bonding of singing the song because when the rest of her memory had faded, the part that, uh, that the part of the memory that governed the song was still there. That's why we teach children uh, important things through music. That's why we sing the ABCs to children so that they can remember uh, their alphabet. Uh, there, there was a song I learned in vacation Bible school uh, that said, uh, uh, now children, uh, how shall I send thee? Uh, go where I send thee, how shall I send thee? I'm going to send thee one by one, one for the little baby that was born, born, born in Bethlehem. Children, how shall I go where I send thee? 
how shall I send thee? I'm going to send thee four by four, four for the gospel preachers, three for the three wise men, two for Paul and Silas, one for the little big baby that was born. For anybody else sing that song? And, uh, and did you know that song uh, was originally used to teach children how to count? Uh, when they were working in fields and education was considered illegal, when it was illegal to teach our forefathers and forefathers how to read or how to count, uh, they would sing this song while they were working in the fields because if you uh, had to work from sun up to sundown and uh, then you had to try to fix a meal and prepare, you didn't exactly have time to go over the basics, uh, especially at a time when it was illegal to do so. And so they had to find ways to teach uh, their, their children how to learn, even when learning was illegal, so they created that song. That song was a way to not only teach them how to count, but also to teach biblical lessons and stories that that was part of the way that our foremothers and forefathers resisted the oppressive structure that they were around. Music has power is what I'm trying to say, uh, my brothers and sisters. Uh, and I, I want to suggest uh, that it's a power that we most of the time or too often leave untapped. Uh, 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 there's a reason why athletes, when they're conditioning, listen to music. It's because you can run a little further when the music is playing. You can, you can push yourself a little harder when the music is playing. There's something about it that enables you uh, to go, uh, to be a little stronger than you were. And as I was thinking about this, I, I thought, what if we could tap into that power for our life? Is there anybody here who can benefit from having just a little bit more strength? Is there anybody here who can benefit from having just a little bit more endurance? Is there anybody who can afford to have a little more peace in your life? Is there anybody who can afford to have a little more joy in your life? Uh, my brothers and sisters, well, I want to suggest that that's possible when we learn how to turn our story into a song. That, this scripture uh, has, uh, it's an amazing story. It's the story of the mother of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Her name was Mary. Mary was a young teenager. Um, at this time when the angel of the Lord comes to her and says, Mary, you are about to, uh, you are uh, about to conceive and have uh, a child. And uh, here's Mary at this point. She's unwed. She's an unwed teenage mother. Uh, and, and God is saying that there's something great that's about to happen. But I have to imagine in the moment that she's hearing the story, it doesn't feel great. Uh, because her society was too different than ours. Uh, their church people weren't that different than our church people. Uh, and, and they had judgment the same way we have judgment. Uh, they had people whispering and saying things uh, outside of the way and that were hurtful the same way. We have people all saying stuff outside of the way that happened in their church the same way it happens in ours. And so here she is, Mary, an unwed teenage uh, woman who's now become pregnant. And I can imagine the whispers uh, started, my brothers and sisters. And uh, uh, Mary realizes that she has to do something. So the Bible says the first thing that she does is she gets out of where she is. Uh, she said, I gotta leave this town, I gotta leave this place, all the whispers, everything that's going on, I gotta get away and go find somebody who loves me and cares about me. Uh, and so she goes and uh, she goes to her cousin Elizabeth's house. Elizabeth, who the angel told her, was experiencing the same thing in her life that Mary was experiencing in hers. And so uh, that's the first lesson I want to pull from the story, my brothers and sisters, and turning her stories into a song that you know what? Find someone whose future story is similar to yours. Now, I need you to help me preach this, all right? I need you to help me preach this because it's cold and your neighbors going to get tired of hearing my voice in about 30 seconds. So I need you to help me just interrupt the flow a little bit and turn to your neighbor and tell your neighbor, he said future story. He said future story. They didn't quite catch it, so tell him again. He said future story. He said future story. Uh, uh, my brother says to me, there are a lot of people in our lives who have similar past stories that we do, and it's good to have those that we can laugh and tell old stories about. Um, in fact, this morning I had 
breakfast with one of my best friends from high school. He came to help set up this morning, and we uh, told a few stories about the, uh, what it was like growing up in high school and what's going on with you and them. Those were great, my brothers and sisters, but you ought to have somebody in your life whose future story is similar to your future story, whose future story is heading in the same direction, your future story is heading, who maybe might be just a little bit closer to getting to the place where you want to go. You have to have somebody whose future is similar to yours, my brothers and sisters, because if everybody around you either has no future or has a future that's different than yours, how are they going to help you get to where you need to go? Amen. Um, Mary had to go to bind herself, connect with somebody who God was doing something as miraculous in their life as God was doing in hers, so that somebody could help her deal with what was happening in her life. So she leaves and goes to Elizabeth's house. Elizabeth, uh, who earlier in the chapter, we find that Elizabeth is somebody, she's not a teenager. Elizabeth is a senior citizen. She has passed her childbearing years, and God has performed a miracle so great it only happens twice in the Bible. Uh, it happened first with Abraham and Sarah, and now uh, some uh, uh, 40 books later, it happens here in the New Testament uh, in the Gospel of Luke with Zechariah and Elizabeth. This, uh, this great miracle that God has done when she has passed her childbearing years, she is pregnant. And now you have someone whose society was saying was too young and unfit to be uh, uh, a mother, and somebody whose society said is too old and by the middle of a miracle process, and God arranges it so both of them can be together, my brothers and sisters. In fact, I just believe that it isn't regular or coincidence that Elizabeth gets pregnant in uh, her uh, in her senior age, that God does this miracle in Elizabeth's life to help prepare her to help Mary in her life, that God knows what is happening, and God is setting this up so that the two of them can be together and help each other in this process, my brothers and sisters, and, and so that in our lives we have to find people whose future story, who where they're going, the work that they're trying to do, the blessing that they are looking for God to do in their life is similar to ours because there's some things that only people who are moving in the same direction can understand. Some challenges that people want to understand unless they're trying to get to where you're trying to go. There's some challenges that people won't be able to help you with that people are direction you're going in. So you got to surround yourself. you got to have people around you who are moving in the direction where you are trying to go. Brothers and sisters, when I was in, uh, when I went to college, uh, I wanted to, I, I was on the basketball team. I wanted to be a good basketball player. I was great for high school. I wanted to be good in college as well. Uh, I had an opportunity to freshman be on the team. What I found out, my brothers and sisters, that if I wanted to be a good basketball player, I could not hang around the football players. If I wanted to be a good basketball player, I could not hang around the track athletes. If I wanted to be a good basketball player, I could not hang around the music students. And it was great to have friends in all those places, but I had to hang around other basketball players because uh, if I hang around people who made the team, people who were productive, I learned the habits both on and off the court that helped me to be better than I was. And so you've got to have somebody in your life, my brothers and sisters, who's helping you move in the direction that you're trying to get to. Well, the, uh, not only does uh, Mary find somebody who's moving in the direction, but the, uh, the second step I want to say to turn your story into a song, uh, 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 can, can I say this like I'm at home? Can I, can I be comfortable today? Uh, uh, I would say, don't story hate, celebrate. And that's what I really want to say. Don't, don't story hate, celebrate. Uh, won't you turn to your neighbor and help your neighbor out? Tell your neighbor, don't story hate. Don't story hate. Celebrate. Celebrate. Uh, uh, mothers and sisters, uh, I want you to see Elizabeth is, uh, God is doing something in Elizabeth's life. And Elizabeth could have decided that she did not want to uh, uh, celebrate what God was doing in Mary's life because God was doing something in her life. And she wanted 
recognition for what God was doing. She wanted to be the person in the line. Like she wanted to be the person that everybody came to and said, what an amazing thing God is doing in your life. But when Mary walks in the door, Elizabeth doesn't shine in the spotlight on herself, but Elizabeth uh, uh, recognizes and says to Mary that I'm blessed that you came to visit me because while God is doing something in my life that's great, I recognize that what God is doing in your life is even greater than what God is doing in my life. Uh, that Elizabeth celebrates Mary and celebrates what God is doing in Mary's life, my brothers and sisters. And I, I just gotta say that sometimes in our life, even That God has sent 
through the angel of faith is. So, you know, I, I do this every once in a while. I say, turn to your neighbor and tell your neighbor. Uh, and I know sometimes y'all say, I did not come here to talk to my neighbor. I came here to hear a word from the Lord. I don't know why you're telling me to turn to my neighbor and talk to my neighbor. I, I'm telling you that, my brothers and sisters, is because uh, sometimes your neighbor needs to hear it from somebody different than just me. Now, I, I, I told you all in, in a previous sermon that an angel, an angel is not the six-winged creature that we think of flying around, two wings covering their face, and two wings covering their feet, and two wings flying. That's not what an angel is. Angel is simply a Greek word that means messenger. It is God's messenger with an appointed message. It's God's FedEx person. It's God's UPS driver. It's God's special delivery carrier, my brothers and sisters. And uh, in fact, when uh, um, when John writes the book of Revelation, he writes it to the angels of the seven churches. He's not writing it to spiritual beings. He's writing it to the pastors of the churches uh, because they are the messengers from God to the church. Uh, uh, and so I told you here in this place, uh, I am God's angel to this church. Uh, so if you ever want to touch an angel, just come up and shake my hand, give me a hug, everybody, you can come home and tell your friends and neighbors I was touched by an angel today. Uh, I am God's angel for this house. Uh, uh, so, my brothers and sisters, I, uh, God gives me a word for you uh, to give to you, to help encourage you, to let you know what God is doing in your life. Uh, and it's important that you get the word from God through the angel. It's important that you are here to hear what God is saying to you uh, because uh, if you don't hear the word from an angel, then the word can't get inside of you. But it's also important not just that you hear the word from an angel, but that that word is backed up and validated by somebody else brothers and sisters. Why? Which is why it's important that we are in relationship with other people, my brothers and sisters, because uh, we need to hear other people validate for us what God is doing in our lives. Uh, especially because there are so many people who try to invalidate what God is doing in our lives. There are so many people who even with the best intentions try to undermine or undercut what God is doing in our lives. Maybe it's 
mistake. Maybe I dreamed it. Maybe I just ate something bad. There's got to be something. This. And with all the people talking about it, with all the whispers that are now going on, how can God be using me? I, I, I can imagine, my brothers and sisters, that when the angel brought the message, as great a news as it was, it did not feel great to Mary that it felt heavy to Mary in a way that that kind of news would feel heavy to anybody. But when Elizabeth uh, tells Mary that God is doing great things in her life, Mary starts to believe it because Elizabeth knows Mary. Uh, they're cousins. They know one another. Elizabeth has watched Mary grow up from a little girl. And so she knows who she is. She knows the mistakes she's made. She knows the things that she's gotten into. She knows, and when Elizabeth can celebrate what God is doing in Mary's life, then Mary can start to celebrate what God is doing in her life. Because Mary can say, if Elizabeth knows who I am, and she's willing to celebrate this, then maybe God is doing something great with me after all. And then Mary sings a song. Then Mary begins to praise God, my brothers and sisters. I, I, I just want to say, my brothers and sisters, uh, there may be somebody in your life right now that God is doing something with God, is trying to speak to or speak through, and they are, they heard, they understand, they're trying to wrestle with what God is doing in their life, but it doesn't make sense to them, and it doesn't make sense to other people, and they're waiting on you to encourage them uh, so that they can walk into, because they don't believe uh, what God is saying to them, or they don't believe what God is doing to them because it feels too heavy. It feels out of place. It doesn't fit with what everybody else is thinking or saying or doing. It seems not to make sense. And they need you. They need somebody who knows them in their best and in their worst. They need you. They need somebody who cares about them. They need you to say, I know what God is doing in their life, and I'm here to stand with you and affirm that I don't care what you've been through. And no matter how long or how articulately or how passionately I preach it, it won't mean the same coming from me up here as it will mean coming from you. Who's walked with them? Who's talked with them? Yes, Our brothers and sisters, that that is how Mary's story turns into a song. When Elizabeth Affirms and lifts up Mary, she says, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For God has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. Surely from now on, generations will call me blessed. Can't can you see right there? Mary's already wrestling with that self, with the self doubt issues. God has looked upon me in my lowliness. From here on, people are going to call me blessed, because ain't nobody called me blessed up until this point. Yeah. Nobody's called me blessed up until now. Nobody's had positive things to say about me, but from now on, people are going to call me blessed. For the mighty one has done great things for me, and holy is his name. God's mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm and scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. This is the part of the song that I like. This is the part of the song that resonates for me because this is the Black Lives Matter portion of the song. Uh, this is where Mary says, uh, uh, what God is doing here, this isn't just God affirming everybody, but God is saying to a powerful God is using me in this moment to change history, to knock down the powerful and lift up the lowly. He's filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He's helped to serve in Israel in remembrance of his mercy according to the promise he made to his ancestors to Abraham and his descendants forever. This is the this is the Black Lives Matter portion of the song. Uh, uh, Mary is saying, God is not just here uh, to bless me uh, as an individual, but God is here to turn the tables of justice in society. And what is happening right now is the start of a transformation that is going to happen in the world. God is going to lift up those who have been bowed down and not down those who have been uh, lifted up. God is turning the tables right now. It's all When Elizabeth lifts her up, 
How to turn a story into a song, my brothers and sisters. Find somebody whose future story is similar to yours. Don't story hate, but celebrate. Yeah. Uh, and understand there's a context that's bigger than you. Yeah. Uh, my brothers and sisters, then we can turn our, our stories into a song. Then we can find the strength to endure. Uh, and the Bible says that Mary remained with her for about three months and then returned to her home. Uh, Mary stayed there and got the strength that she needed from Elizabeth. She stayed there and got the counsel that she needed from Elizabeth, but she didn't stay in Elizabeth's house. Eventually, Mary has to go on back home. Uh, and I can imagine that she went home a very different Mary than she came. She went home a stronger Mary. She went home a more peaceful Mary. She went home with more joy in her heart. She went home with more running in her step because of the time she spent in Elizabeth's house. Because when she went to Elizabeth's house, all she had was a story. Yeah. But when she came out of the house, she had a song. Yeah. She had a song that she could sing about God's greatness and about God's goodness in her life. She had a song that she could sing, my brothers and sisters, that what I hope is that you may have come in here today with a story. Yeah. But I hope that when you leave here, you start to have your own song. Yes. Uh, my brothers and sisters, don't just have a song, but I want you to sing your song. It doesn't matter if you don't sing as great as Lenny, just sing your song. Yeah. It might be off-key, but that's all 